Today, we're going to talk about the new Microsoft List board view. This is one feature that I have been excited to play with ever since it was announced on the Microsoft Roadmap. In this example, we're going to look at how to take my content tracker and use the status column to turn it into a board. I've selected my content tracker and I'm going to briefly go over the data that's included so that we can understand what columns are required in order to make the board view work. So here I have a the content title, an application, a description, the status of the item I'm working on, and what kind of content I am creating. In order for the board view to work, you must have either a choice column or a Boolean column like yes or no. So in this case, status and content are both choice columns, so they are good candidates for a board view. If you go all the way over to the right hand side of the screen and click the drop down next to all items, you will see the option to create a new view. And then you must give your view a name. And then select the type of view you want, which in this case is a board view. Now list is going to ask you to choose a column and you're only going to see the column types that are eligible for a board view. So if you click this drop down and don't see anything, you don't have the proper data set in order for it to work. So I want to organize my board by status. And then I will simply click create. And now we have our board view. What we have here are different swim lanes for each status that I have set up in my list. Lists is always going to add an unassigned items column. And then I added draft needs approval, edit and update and published. In this scenario, I forgot to include a status for in progress. So now I need to add a new bucket. All you have to do is click the plus sign and then type in the name of your new bucket. And what it's actually doing is adding another choice to the choice column that I created in the all items view. Now notice that my columns are a little bit out of order. So what I can do is I can switch from the status view back to the all items view, go to my status column, select column settings, and then select edit. And now you can see all the different choices I have. So first I want to give the in progress column a color. Color coding just makes me happy. If you hover your mouse to the left of the status choice, you can drag and drop it to any order in the list. So I'm gonna make in progress be the first choice. You can grab any of the choice pills and move them around in any order that you like that makes sense for your process. And when you're done, all you have to do is click save. I refresh the screen and switch back to the board view and now you can see that all of my columns are in the order that I specified. So let's create a brand new item. I can do that by clicking the plus sign at the top of any column. For my workflow, I always start everything is in progress. So I'm going to click the plus sign at the top of that swim lane. And then from the right hand side, a data entry card is going to open and I'm just going to quickly put in some information. But notice that because I started in the in progress column, that the in progress choice is automatically populated for me. Once I'm done filling in all of my entries, all I have to do is go to the bottom of the card and press save. Now we've added a new item to our list and it's represented as a card in a swim lane. But as I take a look at these cards, I realize I'm not exactly happy with them. There's a little bit too much information here. So let's take a look at how we can customize these cards. Navigate to the right hand side of your screen and click the drop down next to status board and choose customize card. Now that we're in the card designer, we can see some of the choices we have. In the select content area, there is a check mark in each of the columns that has data. In the change settings area, we have show column names as labels. Notice when I deselected it, the card automatically got a lot smaller. In the content area, I'm also going to deselect description because I really don't need that information on the card. With just a few quick steps, I'm able to customize my card and show just the data I need to see right up front. And now I have the perfect amount of information on my card. And if I wanna see any of the information I've hidden, 
All I have to do is click on the card and here you can see the description and even the ability to add comments to my list item. Now, as I work on my particular project, let's say it's time to get approval from my supervisor for this test item. Rather than going into the card and updating the dropdown, I can just drag and drop it into the next column and notice that lists automatically updated the status to draft needs approval. And as you can see, I can continue moving the card all the way through the phases until I'm done. This has been just one example about how to use Microsoft Lists. If you want to learn more, please click on the video that's showing on the screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.